If you do much work customizing cars, sooner or later you're going to have to make up custom AN hoses. Today, I'm going to show you all the tricks to making up a reliable AN hose. Let's start by talking about all the tools you're going to need for this job. Safety first. Have some safety glasses, some earmuffs, especially if you're using a rotary tool. Aluminum fitting wrenches. <laughs> Sometimes you need a crescent wrench for some of these Chinese fittings where the fitting wrenches don't fit. If you don't have a fitting wrench, this kind of a wrench will work okay. Although it's better to use an aluminum wrench. A tape measure. You need this for measuring the hose. A marker. I like one of these indelibles. I usually use an air-powered rotary cutter like this. It's a real death machine with no shielding on it, so you need to be extra careful. And when using an air tool like this <laughs> with no shielding, I like to turn the air pressure down to reduce the chances of having a catastrophic explosion. Air. We have a good compressor in the shop something you should have in your workshop as well. And I have a blow gun here, which is helpful for blowing out the hoses. Fitting jaws for your vise and a vise. These are soft aluminum fitting jaws and you can see that they have channels in them. This allows you to uh, mount the fitting or mount the hose in various orientations in the vise to hold it so that you can concentrate on the actual assembly of the fitting instead of trying to hold it together. I keep a little engine oil in a little squirt bottle like this. It's very helpful for lubricating the fittings. You'll need some Gorilla Tape or duct tape, something like that. I like this black Gorilla Tape. It's easier to take on and off. One of the little secret tools you might consider is a pair of cable cutters like this, heavy duty cable cutters, which can be very helpful for cutting the, cutting the hose in tight places or places where you can't generate sparks or in places where it's more important to keep the inside of the hose clean. Sometimes you need some little shears like this, if you, especially if you use the uh, cable cutter to just clean up the job at the end. It's good to have a supply of whatever fluid is gonna go through the hose. In this case, this is a jug of waste gasoline and uh, we'll use that to flush the hose after it's all put together. And that's mostly what you need. The kind of fittings we're gonna be talking about today are these AeroQuip style fittings. They come in two parts. The braided line goes in one end, the fitting goes into this end, and it threads together. You can see on this one that's been assembled, the fitting threads in here and grips onto the, onto the hose. That holds it tight in its final installation. The first step is getting the hose the right length. If you're doing this on the vehicle, you're going to string it out to the place that it needs to be, and then mark the hose. Usually I mark it with a with a uh, indelible marker like that. Then you can take a measurement with a tape measure. If you know how specifically how long it needs to be if you've measured on the vehicle, and you can put the mark at the measurement point. If you have a mark on the hose where you know you want to cut it, the next step is to take a measurement to that mark from some known location. In this case, we could measure it from the end of the hose. That's about three quarters of an inch. Or we could measure it from a, a fitting like this, laid out on the bench. That's about 11 and a quarter inches. And then we'll make note of that and we're going to take and tape wrap the hose. Take this, we'll take a piece of 
Gorilla Tape. And we're going to put one or two wraps on there. Now the reason for this is when we cut it, we don't want the steel braid to delaminate and go everywhere. So now we've got a little uh, taped up hose and we're going to take and recreate that mark. So we know we were three quarters of an inch from the end. I'm going to put our tape measure on there. And we're going to put a mark on the tape at the three quarter inch point. And I like to expand it a little bit like that. And that's our cut point. So now we're ready to start cutting this hose. So when you go to cut it, you put the hose in the vise, in the soft jaws like this, in a spot where you can see that mark. And you try and get it in there straight. Tighten it up so it's held right. You might find you have to rotate it just a little bit. Then you put on your safety glasses and your earmuffs when you're using an air tool like this. And you're going to go ahead and start cutting it. Now, I like to use air. You can use electric. But one of the reasons to use an air tool is, especially for one that's as inherently unsafe as this one, you can turn the air pressure down so that your rotation speed is lower, which makes it a little less likely to have an explosion. So, let's cut that. Just that easy. All right, once you've cut the hose, you can pull it out. You can see I have a nice clean cut there. One of the things that I think is fair to point out is this procedure, when you use a rotary, fills up the inside of the tool or inside of the hose with all kinds of debris from cutting. So you're gonna to wanna to wash this out or wipe it out first and at the end of the day, if this is something like a fuel hose or a, um, an oil line, you're going to want to flush this before you actually use it on the car. One way to get debris out of the hose is with a Q-tip. Put the Q-tip in there. See all that crap come out of there? <laughs> it's just full of debris. So don't make the mistake of building this up on the car hooking it up to your new EFI system and then filling the EFI system with crap. You need to tie it back to a waste uh, jug and run fuel through it first into a waste jug to get it flushed out. So I promise to tell you all the professional secrets of building up custom AN lines and here's one of them. This is a set of heavy duty cable cutters. It's designed to cut bundles of cable but it works great for cutting hoses like this where would you use this well anywhere you can't get at with a rotary cutter anywhere where throwing sparks off of the uh, metal jacketing the braided uh, jacketing on the hose is going to cause problems like on top of your fuel tank or near a fuel system and anywhere where you need to keep the hose as clean as possible when you cut it. Now the downside of cutting it with a cable cutter is you put a little crimp in the hose. The upside is you get a clean connection, you get no mess, no sparks, you don't even have to have safety glasses. So I'll show you how you do this. You put the cutter over, you have the hose marked. This is just a piece of scrap so it doesn't matter. And away you go. Now, sometimes you end up with a little bit, a little bit of the braid left on there. So you can use a, a separate small cutter to cut those little pieces of braid off.
this kind of a shear tool will get any little pieces of braid that have stayed attached. And you do this gently to try and get it clean. Now I think one of the downsides of cutting hose this way is you often end up with little extra bits of braid like this. It's not, a, it's not as nice of a cut as with a rotary tool, but it sure helps when you're in a tight spot. Okay, so that's cut. You can see it's crimped it a little bit and it's made the jacket a little bit harder to deal with. In fact, I even see a little piece on there still that I'd like to get rid of. And you gotta be careful when you're working with your bare hands around the steel braid line because these little braids can get in your finger and cause a real sliver. Once you have the hose cut, you're gonna to wanna to unwrap it. So you just grab onto your Gorilla Tape at the end that's furthest away from the cut and you peel this back. You try to stay away from the actual cut point because there can still be little pieces, little slivers of braided jacket on there. You can throw that piece of tape away. And you can see with that rotary cut, I get a quite clean cut with very little uh, contamination or bits of extra braid on there. That's why the rotary cut is the nicest. The next step is to take your fitting apart and take the end that's going to go on the hose, turn that around so the threads are towards the end of your vise, and insert that in the vise so it's held in place. Then you can take your hose and insert it in there. I always carry this little mini Leatherman with me, and the tiny screwdriver on here can be a very helpful tool for pushing any errant pieces of steel braid into the fitting. Now you just kind of caulk it a little bit and turn it in. And if you've got a good clean cut, like with a rotary cutter, it's gonna push right in. If it doesn't, you can, you can go around here with this little tool or a tiny screwdriver, anything that works, and just poke any of the steel braids in. And you use that twisting motion to put it together to help twist those, bitter, those steel braids into the end. Now, once you've got that done, you'll see, you push that in until, the, until it's right up against the threaded part of the fitting, and then you're ready for the next step. Here's another little secret. Before you go, to, you go ahead and start putting the fitting together, take a little piece of masking tape like this and wrap it around the hose flush to the fitting. Just like that. The point of this step is so that you can see visually that when you've installed the fitting, that you didn't push the hose out. So then you know that hose is still tight to the threaded part of the fitting. Yes, you don't have to do it this way, but if you do, you'll have a lot more success, uh, especially in light of the fact that the odd one does push back on you. Now we're ready to assemble the fitting. So we're gonna take it and insert it in our soft jaws like this. With that fitting, just protruding a little bit. Then we're gonna take the other end of the fitting and before we start putting it together, we take our engine oil and we put just a little bit on here, wipe that around, lubricate the threads just a little bit and this will make this go together a lot easier. Okay, then we'll start. I like to hold the hose from the bottom. You start by pressing the, pressing the fitting together. There you go. You gotta make sure that, it's, that it goes in there. And then it should start 
it should start to turn in just by hand. Okay. Then you're going to take your fitting wrench. This is the hose end side. <clears throat> I usually get down on my knees here, push that up out of my way, and I hold up, hold up on the hose to prevent it from pushing down. And then you just turn it together. It's great if you can do this in one smooth fluid motion you can't always. And as you get further in, it'll get tighter. Sometimes it'll be tight enough you have to stop. But if there's any way, you try to tighten that up so that the two halves of the fitting are tightened right together. Now, if you're doing this with aluminum fitting wrenches like this, it's a lot easier on the fittings. It doesn't damage them. It doesn't mark them. And even when they're tight like this, you're a lot less likely to distort them. Okay, so that's down tight. Hopefully you can see I've got it so that the two halves of the fittings are properly tightened together. That's it. That's your hose end. Now, so as I said earlier, it's important when you're done to flush these fittings out because especially if you cut them with a rotary cutter, they can get really dirty. You can use air like this, not a bad place to start. Remember, I already Q-tipped this one. So it doesn't look too bad. Then if you have a loose hose like this that you're making up on the bench, you can take and put some, some of whatever fluid is gonna be in there. This is a little bit of waste gasoline. It's not very nice. I would use something a little better if this was a real job. But you put a couple of flushes of gas in there extra hard with a 180 on the other end and flush that out that'll help flush out the debris and finally especially if it's a fuel fitting on the vehicle tie the feed to the return up at the front of the car just use some uh, just use some couplers so you need a couple extra fittings in your bin but you can always reuse those Tie them together, the return to the feed with uh, some couplers, and at the uh, return end, at the tank, feed that return hose into a waste jug <laughs> like this, and then jumper the fuel pump and run the pump for a little bit. You know, if you, if you have, these are a four liter jug or one US gallon jug, I guess it is. Um, don't be afraid to waste a little gas. Get that about half full with fuel that you've pumped through here to make sure that you have flushed all the crap out of it. Because if you don't, you can end up flushing that crap into the injectors or into the, uh, tiny, um, the tiny passages in your carburetor and really screwing it up. Oh, and by the way, when everything's said and done, you can see I didn't push this back and I can just peel that piece of tape off and throw it away. That's it. Those are the secrets to building a reliable custom AN line. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell so that you won't miss out on future videos.